Hello, back for coffee. My coffee's water. Look, I'm magic. I've turned my coffee into water. <laughs> so, uh, how are you doing, Vise? Good. It's been a it's been a fiery week this week. I think we've all been feeling a little bit uh sassy and um enough is enough, having to put some boundaries up. And so I've, it's a good oh. thing though. Yeah, I watch your channel update. I've also seen some of your brilliant interviews this week. And yeah, I've been feeling a bit sassy. I haven't been feeling that well this week, but I think lots of different reasons for that. Um, and I'm feeling much better now, so I'm back on track. But um, yeah, I think boundaries is a really important one. And this is going to be really linked to what we're talking about today, because one of the things that we wanted to talk today is about the vibration of our thoughts. And we've spoken around this and about it a lot but there's a lot of discussions with everyone at the moment about dates, things are going to happen, shifting timelines, timelines running at the same things. And I was listening to one of your Sophia Code books and something clicked into face, place for me because I'd been thinking, Bryce, for quite a long while about how if you go and see anyone, whether it's um, any sort of person that's predicting the future it, with whatever method they're using to predict the future – to me, there's a lot of similarities to that with the placebo and the nocebo effect. So, for example, if you tell someone that's seriously ill that they've got six months to live, research and data shows that they'll die within six months because yeah. it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So if you go to some sort of person that's predicting your future and they say you're going to meet a tall, dark stranger within six years, at a subconscious level, you'll start making choices that will make that reality more likely to happen. And we've been talking a lot about being very conscious, and you've done some brilliant videos on this, about being really conscious about the vibration of your thoughts, because if that's where your focus is, that's what you're attracting into you. So we were going to have a good old chat around this today. There's so much to it, isn't there? Yes. And this is something that the, if, if we, you know, on a macro scale, because everything is macro and micro as above, so below. And on the macro scale, What's happening globally right now, not only are we as the general public awakening to how powerful we really are, but we're coming up against this friction because the controllers know how powerful we are. And therefore, they have been by their um, propaganda, we'll say on the, the TV, everything you guys know what we're talking about, they steer your thought process into a certain narrative because where the energy go is goes is where the outcome flows right and so we're seeing now that what we think what our thoughts are are not only affecting us on the micro in our own personal lives but collectively if you have a collective group of people that's being told to think about something in a certain way it's going to shift the, the whole of the of the planet in a certain way i hope that makes sense you are your own magician you are your own your thoughts are so freaking powerful and um and that's god gave god made you that way and so that's what i was we've been saying a lot with like you know i appreciate the tarot card readers that can say you know take what resonates understand if this doesn't fit it's not your story like really trying to help you as a person practice that discernment because they understand how powerful your thoughts are and so um i was saying yesterday with shanti a lot of people are very confused when i say we're in gog and magog and not the apocalypse and what's happening too with a lot of the um religious uh, institutions that follow the book of revelation is that they are tricking you they're tricking you into thinking that we're at what the Christians call the apocalypse, which is a very scary place to be. Because if you know the book of Revelation, you know with apocalypse, there's a tribulation, people get their heads chopped off, there's all sorts of scary, scary stuff that happens. But what happens when we take ourselves into a low vibration of fear is that it shifts the reality around us. And that's what the controllers want because they want the great reset. And so they're using you as a pawn to make you go, go into this thought vibration of a lower vibration to uh, to duplicate, to have a redo of the apocalypse. Because my friends, the apocalypse already happened. It already happened. Our history is a bunch of lies. The apocalypse happened already. We already had the 1,000 years of peace, which was Tartaria. And so what does that mean? That means we're at Gog and Magog at this point. And for us as humans, if you are following the book of Revelation, if you are, that is what you're following. What that means is that is really good news that we're at Gog and Magog. 
if we look at this from a third density, if we take religion out of it, just take religion out of it and just look at spirituality, we're in a third density planet. It's a planet of polarity, dark and light. This is a, also a planet of choices. You come here to earth school, to the master class of earth school to decide what you want, to decide which choices that you want to make because free will is the main law of the universe. And right now they've made it really easy. It's like an open book test. Mm -hmm. Which choice do you want to make? They've made it very obvious because the earth itself, the planet itself also has to, has to change. It's like a snake that slides off its skin. It has to change too. And once it bumps up a notch into fourth density, then you're either going to a positive planet or service to other or a negative planet, which is service to self. It's not no longer polarized, which sounds wild to us because I don't think we understand anything that isn't polarized in third density. Uh -huh. But what's happening according like to the law of one, and this is also mimics revelation is so in, in this, this earth contract between source creator and earth, because we're third density, we're in this place of choice. So we have the devil and God, dark and light, bad, wrong, right, all that kind of stuff. You guys know what we're talking about, whatever you want to label that is. And now that we're moving out of that, the choices are going to start to go away because we're going to go into the outcome of our own decisions, if that makes sense. And so what the hijackers, the controllers are starting to do, now we're looking at that timeline war, that battle war, war, uh, war between which density we're going to go to. And um, with Gog and Magog, though, that's when the, the devil, the darkness has to leave after Gog and Magog has to leave because the planet is no longer third density. They have to go to another third density planet. I know that might sound very sci-fi, but law one does a way better, way better at describing that than me. But, but because this is an opportunity of choice, you hold the power. You are the storm. You watching are the silver bullet. You are yeah. what's important. It's your thoughts. And so why are we going to allow our thoughts to get out of hand so somebody else can use us, can manipulate us for their own nefarious deeds? Why aren't we taking our power back and controlling those thoughts? And again, it's not just about the macro. This isn't just about the timeline that we're on right now, because honestly, the timeline we're on right now is only part of why we came to this earth individually. We also have our own lessons to learn. We also have our own experiences to have in these bodies on this earth. And frankly, even though we're in a really intense time right now, earth is third density. Earth is also a really cool place to be. It's a really lovely place to be. It's it's there's a lot of really great experiences too. And so that vibration of thought is so important. And every single person matters. Every single person's thought process matters. It's like, have you ever had those day, days, Catherine, where you like wake up, and you stump your toe and then you like yeah. hit your elbow and you start getting frustrated. And then after that, everything starts to go wrong. Everything starts to be, it's because you are now bringing it in because you're frustrated. But it's no, now I very rarely have them because I've got the tools to shift it. And it's very funny you said that, which is why I wanted to speak about this day. So it started with me today. So I got up very early today because we're having work done at home at the moment. Now, I have manifested the best work people coming into our house ever because they're all animal lovers and they've all got rescue animals. Because having my little, a little lovely sanctuary of rescue animals, when they find particularly men coming in, it can really be quite triggering for my dogs and bring back some memories. And also for some of the cats as well. Guinea pigs are fine. <laughs> Horses don't seem to care, but it can be. So this time, instead of focusing on will the animals be OK when we're having all this disruption because all their normal environment is being moved around, I've just completely focused that I'm going to manifest the best. And every single person that's come in has got their own rescue animals. They're like, oh, yeah, fantastic. Of course I will. Of course I'll be careful. I'll move this. Of course I'll shut the gate. It's been absolutely amazing. But I think it's, it's the real aha moment for me, and I, I just think what you've just said there is so, so important, is because this is why we're so strict on the boundaries about what we talk about, who we talk to, what we're resonating with. It's not saying every single person listening there is at a different stage in their journey. But if you're not, that everyone, I'm sure everyone's got some aspect of their life that they'd like to improve on. Very unusual to just be 100% satisfied with everything. But therefore, you can look at that from projecting jealousy or bitterness on other people that you perceive to have something that you want 
Or you can do what you're talking about and saying, well, I'm the storm. I've got the power of my own reality. I'm understanding the connections. What I'm going to do is be really joyful that for that person, because by being in that vibration, that's what I'm going to start attracting more easily into my life. And what we see at the moment, you know, we're talking about there's a lot of things. When's this event going to happen? When that event's going to happen? And I get it completely. Of course, there's curiosity. There's that fine line between being aware of what the master plan is by the evil lot and therefore counteracting it, but then not focusing on, on it. So you, you've got that awareness, you've learned it, which then makes it easy to make decisions that are going to bugger up their plan. Yeah. And that's why I keep telling people, like, if you want to, if you want to flip this and start working on yourself, start healing yourself, start yeah. meditating, start watching your own thoughts, start really taking care of you. Don't allow somebody else to take care of you for you, because that's what we've been trained to do, right? We've been trained to rely on somebody else to tell us the answers. But the thing is, is you already have all the answers because you have that, that you have that divine link to source, just like everybody else does. And so if you, if you're worried about the master plan, worry about yourself. And once you start to heal yourself and you start to shift that energy coming out of you, everybody around you naturally starts to get affected by that. And yes, you will lose friends. You, when you start to take care of yourself, people will, that can't vibrate with you are going to fall out by the wayside. That, that is just a natural part of human evolution, but you will also attract people who are also taking care of themselves. And I know, I mean, I, I know in my life, I can look back, let's just take love relationships, for example, because when you're in your 20s, I don't know, your daughter seems very mature for 20. But when I was in my 20s, those relationships were very dramatic, very, yeah. very dramatic, because people were not healing them. So we were too young to understand how to heal ourselves. Once I started healing myself, though, I started to attract in better relationships, healthier relationships, because all of a sudden, like was attracting like. Mm -hmm. You know, you also have to, that also includes speaking of like losing friends. It also includes, you know, if you have a friend in your life, that's constantly putting ideas in your head about another person, about a thing, and you notice it's shifting the way you view things, pay attention to that, pay attention to that because you have that power to block that and change that. If you want to energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be tr changed. It's up to you to filter that and, tr and transmute that. And so um, it, it's, it's so once you start to see this one, and I think, and I don't know, Catherine, maybe it's a Western thing for all of us that live in the Western world. We've been conditioned to believe in, in Western culture, at least maybe not now so much, but when I was a kid, like everything, body, thought, mind was all separate. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And that you could have these thoughts and it didn't affect the outcome, which is something that the, in the East they've been teaching for years. That's just a part of understanding from Eastern philosophy. And I think that Westerners are just now starting to pick up on the fact that you actually create your reality. You yeah. are actually, it's called the Shakti. Your body is a creation, is the Shakti of your soul. And so if your body is the creation of your soul to express itself, then your whole world around you is also a Shakti of your soul, your thought process, everything expressing itself. And so if you want us to go into 40 positive, start thinking 40 positive. Oh, it's so important. And I, it's just man of every time, you know, it's so easy. We will say to you guys listening, um, it's very easy to talk about these things. And half the time, Bryce and I are having these conversations because it might be something that's coming up in one of our yeah. lives at the moment. And that's very appropriate for me. And what's so funny is, is most of the stuff is so simple. It's right back to basics. That's why I was reaching for the book. You know, you, you Jamie, and I are going to be doing, this is the four agreements. Um, we're, we're reading through the fifth agreement at the moment, and we're doing another show on that tomorrow because these things – are so simple but when you get those basics right so much of your life falls into place so this morning I had to go move my car out of the way and go and deliver something to the post office and we live on very narrow single track country lanes so when you pass something coming the other way one of you's got to reverse a long way back and a lot of people around here can't reverse so I went out this morning and I was a little bit focused on something else. And the first two people I came to were just really angry and really miserable and wouldn't reverse and then didn't even say thank you when I did. My old me would have said, miserable bastards, you know, what's wrong with them? And I was like, oh, that's interesting that that's what I've attracted. So what I did the next time is like a loony, <laughs> sort of like, oh, 
bye thank you I'll go back like this and then suddenly I've got a smile and a wave and things like that and it's literally can be that instantaneous not always not always of course some people will have too much on their mind to focus and be focused you can't break through that energy barrier but and most of the time you can and you can shift things so quickly once you've got that awareness so part of why I talk about this is, is it's as much a reminder to myself as it is to anyone else and you know I've noticed a lot recently in terms of um, a lot of anger coming out of quite a lot of people a lot of anger a lot of resentment and of course it's really important we let that out we don't want to hold that emotion in there but be conscious of where and how you let it out is also a decision that you can make you know I've just taken up boxing it's brilliant it's a great way for letting my anger out um, you know, you got, might want to go in into the woods and scream, um, ask the trees first. That's right. You know, there's all sorts of ways. But so we're not saying about suppressing emotions. No. We're saying we're not saying about we're just saying be aware. And once you've caught, got that awareness, then you've got a choice is open to you about what you do with it. Yeah. And absolutely. I'm so glad you brought that up. Yeah. We're not asking you to suppress feelings of anger because sometimes anger is justified yeah. but what i would suggest like if you have a really good friend or family member that you can call in a very healthy way being like something just happened and i'm really angry about it can i talk to you through it can i talk you through it and if you want advice ask for advice if you don't want advice if you just you say i just i just need to talk some, to, to someone through it most people are more than happy to sit down and listen to what you have to say and the talking about a situation that's maybe made you angry is is the first step in starting to transmute that energy yeah you no know, it's like so you're not projecting that anger out now on somebody else or into another situation you can work through it unpack it and then transmuted into something else so uh, yeah we're not saying suppress anything don't please don't suppress anything because that's what's going to cause a lot of issue it's, it's always going to come up if you suppress it it's going to keep trying to come up so don't suppress anything but yes it is it is in projection projection is a tough one because a lot of people do project and i think sometimes with the vibration of your thoughts sometimes our thoughts get the best of us you know, yeah. one of my favorite sayings is don't believe everything you think. Mm -hmm. And I've learned a lot in this journey myself of, of how to take, because we get some crazy comments sometimes. I mean, 99.9% .9 of the comments are beautiful and awesome and amazing. And again, I'll say it. I just am still shocked that people want to watch my videos. So I am so appreciative. But sometimes you get these comments that are just like, what is the, like, it's it's comical you know yeah. I, I was saying telling you Catherine and people on my my channel know I was asked if I was like an asset to the government and I, on a live show was uh, with our friend Zublik like, and I think my face was probably like I mean that was the first time I'd ever I mean I've gotten some whoppers about me but that was that was a big old whopper and I literally tried to handle it with humor like I just posted about boob sweat on my Twitter I highly doubt I'm rest assured I'm not working for the government you know um so so it, it's just trying to take that and trying to transmute it into something let's laugh about this now let's let's uh you know let's let's uh let's transmute that and and I was saying to you Catherine in my video what spawned me to do my video um check up for my channel is it really upset me that there was somebody who had created this story about the opening song on my on my on my show that I've had since I started and that's one of my friends bands there's no conspiracy it's one of my friends bands and my whole point in in the 4d positive world that I see going forward is that we're all helping each other we're all promoting yes. each other's businesses we're all promoting each other's talents you know like and that's my friend I, I don't get a kickback when you guys buy the 99 cents for the full song that's in the description box I don't get a kickback I don't want a kickback I'm happy to support him I'm happy to help him promote his music because he's really talented our friend Liz is so talented with her t-shirts love them it? we don't want to kick back we don't want to we we want to support her we want her to be successful because when your friends are successful that's exciting i'm excited when my friends are successful you know our friend stephanie's tarot business is picking up because we it, we're all helping each other out that's the vibration going forward there's no conspiracy about trying to derail people with an opening song that's crazy thinking so we have to watch those thoughts you know, and understand that what's the, oh, we're helping each other out. We're all pushing each other forward. And that's what the world I'm choosing to move forward in. And that's why I'm putting my attention in. And I was saying on my channel update this morning, it's like where I'm at is I am really genuinely grateful for anyone that's got off their backside 
and put themselves out there in whatever way it might be. Now, it might be a channel. It might be helping your neighbours out. It might be setting up a community group. It might be printing leaflets and educating people. There's so many different ways people are doing it. It might be teaching people how to grow their own vegetables. Anyone that has taken a proactive step to do something that's moving us out of the old way of behaving and supporting into the new. And I think anyone that's got a problem with abundance in any aspect of your life, whether it's in your relationships, whether it's in your love life, whether it's in your finances, um, whether it's in your health, whatever aspect of your life you're looking at for, for abundance, I want that for everyone around me because there is no limit of it. And I completely accept that people, everyone's going to go through stages in their life where it seems like everything is against you. Well, what's going to be good for you to people that are going to wallow in the sorrow with you or people that are going to say, here's some suggestions, just one might resonate for you, just one, there might be. And, and this is what I'm excited about. I'm excited for the people that, despite the fact that are saying, we are going to keep focusing on moving forward with the ups and downs, the roller coaster that that will be. Again, it's not about just saying happy thoughts. It's not about not letting yourself understand, oh my goodness, I'm somewhere I don't want to be, or I've slipped back into that behavioral pattern again that I thought I'd got over. Whatever it might be, I've slipped back into that eating habit again. I've now realized it's not serving me. Doesn't matter. It's like when you recognize it, you've got a choice to do something about it. And that's what it's about. And we've all recognised, anyone who's watching either of you, us, has recognised that there's a lot about the world that we're living in at the moment that we don't want to continue. And therefore, every single one of us has got a responsibility for choosing behaviours that are supporting where we do want it to be. Absolutely. I mean, it's that man in the mirror be the change you want to see in the world as gandhi said you know you are the change you are the storm i just i really and i've said that so many times on my channel don't stop sitting around mm -hmm. eating popcorn waiting for the kennedys to do something if you sit around eating popcorn waiting for someone else to do something you're going to be waiting your whole life you you are the plot twist you're the storm you're i mean i want everybody to understand like that's what they're fighting over is you right now because you are so powerful so mm -hmm. own it and help us. And, and, and even in your own, like I said, it starts in the micro one. The micro is what's going to affect the macro. There's abundance for everybody. There's enough for everyone. There's enough love for everyone. There's enough food for everyone. There's enough uh, money for everyone. There's enough. There's enough for there's enough land for everyone. You really think that nature would God would make give us a planet that where there wasn't enough for all of his creations? Have you seen how beautiful humans are? How beautiful animals are how beautiful uh, source creator isn't going to create something that doesn't exactly that does that where there's there's not a purpose and there's not enough for every single human every single living being so start living in that stop getting out of that negative oh it's doom and gloom the white hats haven't done anything blah 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 all blah 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 no you focus on yourself turn the tv off if the news is stressing you out and bringing you to a low vibration you know it's fake anyway turn it off just turn it off. If watching, you know, Stephanie and I have talked about this. If watching too many truther videos mm. starts to get to you, turn us off. Mm. Put some music on. Put a comedy on that makes you feel better. Go out and take a walk. You hold that power. You hold that power. You were put on this earth at this time for a specific reason, and that is because you are powerful. So start acting like it. Act like the royalty that you are the spiritual royalty that you are, watch your thoughts and understand, don't let people manipulate your thoughts because they, they understand your thoughts better than you do. Own that because you are powerful. And that's one thing I really, you know, I, I want everybody watching to, to just understand, like no more are we going to be in a world where there's celebrity and other people, royals and other people. You are all royalty. Mm. You are created by the most high. You carry that spark of life. You are all royalty, so start bringing that into your world. You know, be be that and, and helping other people, and helping other people understand that too. That they are so special. They warts and all, we are so special. Do not let people bring you to that place of low vibration where you're in fear. That's a terrible place to be. I remember our friend Stephanie talking about how she used to be afraid to drive because the church had scared her so much about the apocalypse that are dying. 
that she was terrified if she drove down the street, she was going to have a car accident, die, go to hell. Like, that's no way to live your life. Don't live your life in that fear. You control that. The life is beautiful. Even though we're not where we want to be right now, it's still beautiful. It's hot as hell outside down here in Georgia, but it's still beautiful. There's beautiful flowers. There's beautiful animals. The sun is shining. The, the birds are chirping. Like, it's still beautiful. Start no. And that's it's not true, Catherine. When you start to focus on what you're on what you're grateful for in your life, versus it shifts everything, doesn't it? it shifts every single thing shifts. And I've seen some amazing examples recently of of people really going out of their way to help other people and. It, it, they're not doing it for reward they're not doing it for recognition but actually what they get back from that act of kindness you know the universe gives back what you put into it so absolutely and also I think oh, I know we keep saying this about the no judgment you're allowed to have times in your life where you make bad choices because there's lessons to learn from it we all have we've all done yeah. that I'm sure we're all going to do it a lot in the future and when you can laugh about it and just say okay now I've made some bad choices. This is being reflected back to me. Now I'm going to just start today to do something about it, however small it is, just start today. And this is where, and I've fallen into the trap before when we started talking about the Jabberwockies and things like this and being judgmental about people. And then I thought, God, stop it. Stop it. Look at decisions I've made in the past yeah. on all sorts of areas of my life. You know, you Same. are exactly <laughs> where you're meant to be. And everyone else is exactly where you went to be. So when you can appreciate that we, every single person has got their own little journey, you say it all the time. Don't compare your lesson, you know, one to the lesson 10. You've got to be, you're where you need to be for right now, but you have got a choice about are you going to keep moving forward or are you going to stay there? That's, yeah. that's and that's how you get wisdom. You don't make wisdom. You don't create wisdom for making good choices people who are wise it's because they've made bad choices and they've learned from them mm. that's where wisdom comes from so if you look at that so yeah don't don't judge yourself too harshly if you've messed up in the past you learn i learned from that like that's how we learn like like you were saying like having to back out and being it, 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 it's like a domino effect right you, you learn that and you're able to sit back and be the observer and say wait a minute i did that like I, and so i can undo that and i can change that, I did that. yeah <laughs> exactly and thank you because I'm a really good reverser. <laughs> In my first job, when I got my first sort of company van, I had to drive a van. And once you've driven a van with the, no back withers, you can reverse anywhere. So all these lessons in life, you come back to thank you for. You don't realize them at the time, but you come back. So I think, you know, as I said, our message for today, and it's a message for ourselves as much as everyone out there, is just catch yourself when you're having those thoughts. Just catch yourself when you're having those conversations. See if you can be the one to turn a conversation around. See if you can be the one to turn a relationship around. See if you can be the one to just take one step today to do something different and positive for someone else because you are going to benefit. You're not doing it for your benefit, but you energetically, you're adding to what you want to see in the world and that will come back to you and just watch how quickly things shift for all yeah. of us Speak you know. out, i'll tell you guys a funny story speaking about driving and learning from your mistakes so um down here in georgia when i got my driver's license we have very big roads you know in this america yeah. big roads big cars lots of parking so in georgia i never had to learn how to parallel park and then after college i went moved to LA for work and LA is a bunch of parallel parking. And for a long time, this is before Uber, this is before any of that stuff. It really terrified me. I was living in this fear of not being able to find a parking spot. So I got a friend one day, I was like 24 years old and we literally spent all day me learning how to parallel park. And now at 39 years old, I'm the best damn parallel parker. You will, I, I, I kick ass when it comes, I learned how to do that so well because I was so afraid of it. And I finally got fed up of being afraid of it because that fear is bondage. You know, if yeah. I could parallel park, I go anywhere. And now at 39, I'm still the best damn parallel parker that there is. And so you're right. When you're able to turn that, that's another, like you being able to reverse, like, you know, it's just, it's just silly stories about driving, but it's the same thing with your thoughts. The minute you're tired of that fear, just turn, turn it around and, and change it because you can. That's your power. That's your secret weapon. That's your superpower. 
and you get so much out of it. You know, we've talked a lot about cold water therapy. You know, I was having this conversation um, with one of the chaps that's working in our kitchen at the moment. And as I honestly, five years ago, I was not ready to hear that. I was the person that says, not for me, thanks. I'm really cold. It's not going to be good for me. It's going to damage. Excuse, 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 excuse. Now I've reached a different level of awareness. I've gone into it with a very different attitude. And it was so much easier than I thought and so much more beneficial than I could have thought. And it costs you nothing, nothing. Everyone can find somewhere cold to go and get in or have a cold shower. Everyone. Uh, what else? I'll say something simple too. Like I was thinking when you were talking about when you're in a bad mood, you were talking about the car. Like next time you're at the grocery store, guys, find five people just to make eye contact with and smile at. And see what happens. Five strangers and just make eye contact. Don't don't be creepy. Don't go up and be like, you know, stare at them. <laughs> you know, just uh, make eye contact and just smile at them and see what happens and see how it changes them and see how it changes you. If you go take your dog on a walk, you pass people down here in the South, we always say hello to people we pass. Like, hey, how are you doing? Like everyone you pass. And I notice in other parts of the world, in America, they don't do that. But in the South, you always say hello to people. Hey, how you doing when you pass with, with, with your dogs? And um, start, start doing that. If you take your dog out and you pass somebody, just say, hey, how you doing? You know, be, be the Absolutely. friend that someone said to me once, if you want to, if you want a friend, you got to be a friend. If you want a good future, you got to create a good future. That's the power you hold. Starts with the thought. It th starts with your decisions on how you think and watch it change your world. Watch it change your world around you. So as always, let us know how it's working out for you. Um, and we want to hear your good tips. What, what's your golden nuggets that when you find yourself slipping into that, that you can switch yourself around and share them with people because we'll all be really grateful for it. Thank you so much, Bryce, as always. It's really sunny here again. We've had a week of sunshine in the UK. I've even had to water my plants. Which oh, Wow. Yeah, that's how warm it's been. So I'm very happy. The dogs are happy. They've been had a nice walk. Guinea pigs are out. So all is going well. And we will be back tomorrow with our lovely, lovely friend, Jamie Soleil. And we will be doing the third agreement of the fifth agreement. And we will be having a good old chinwag about that. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Have a brilliant day, everyone. Bye, Bye. guys.